So thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm so excited to get to share with you uh, one of the techniques that I really love to use in my marine paintings. And it's this light filtering effect. And it's actually pretty simple to do. It's basically, we're gonna start with a gradient, starting with just four colors that I shared earlier. It's titanium white, phthalo blue, teal, and turquoise. And these are all golden acrylics colors, but any acrylics will work perfectly. Um, so those are gonna be our four colors. It's gonna be super simple. Gonna start from our lights and gonna go layer down to our darks. We're gonna take a few minutes, like maybe five minutes, midway through, let that dry. And then we're gonna hop back in and go straight into doing ripples up top, coming all the way down about midway, and then jumping right into the light rays. So it'll actually go pretty quickly. This is one of the reasons why I love acrylics is because you can develop out your artwork fairly fast and um, it's a lot of fun to play with. And if you have any oopsies, you can easily go back in and paint over it. And it's pretty, pretty simple. So the other things you're gonna need is, let me pull these out, um, these brushes. So I'm gonna be using a size 20 flat brush and a size four flat brush and then a small round brush. This is a two over zero uh, flat, I mean, sorry, flat brush, round brush. Um, but I mean, anyone in this kind of variation will work great. And then of course, you just need a rag and your water cup and you're all good to go, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and like hop right into it. And then whenever we take the break, I'll share with you a bit more information about other classes and other ways you can get connected with some more artwork like this. So the first brush we're going to use is our big flat brush. This guy right here. Gonna get that nice and wet and then kind of dab it so it's not just completely dripping in water. And we're gonna start with some white. And they actually put up our canvas right here. That's what we're gonna be using. <laughs> And it's an eight by 10 canvas, just so you know, but you can use whatever uh, canvas that you have available. So you're gonna be using that big flat brush, the largest one you have, you know, getting a nice layering effect on either side, and then go ahead and layer it into about a third down your canvas. Just like so. And again, I'm not using a whole ton of water here, guys. Uh, because it won't soak into the canvas quite as well as a deep color if you're using too much water. So just keep that in mind. All right, so about a third of the way down, you don't even have to clean your brush. You're just going to dip it right into that teal color that you have, down a little bit on both sides, and then start where you ended with your white and brush it all the way up. Just like so. You don't want to take away all your white at the very, very top, but you really want to get it mostly this really pale teal color. And you're going to take that down about halfway. Let me wipe my brush. So now I would recommend just wiping off your brush just a tiny bit so it's not just loaded with that teal color. And you're going to jump right into doing your turquoise. And now I'm using a heavy body acrylic for the turquoise. The other ones are um, fluids. But it's uh, fine, all you have to do is just add a little bit of water to that heavy body if you're using heavy body, and you'll be all good to go. So you're gonna actually start by just layering in with that, again, that turquoise color, again, where you ended with the previous color. And if you notice, I'm kind of doing this rounded, kind of like fisheye effect, um, and that's because it's gonna help us kind of create that illusion and, and that feeling of our light rays coming through as we get to that, into that phase. I'm gonna grab some more water. And I'm going to layer in a bit more of this turquoise, a little more heavily. Just like so. And then you're even going to add that turquoise color up the edges. So you're gonna bring it up almost all the way to the top on the right side and the left side, but leave this center portion. Um, that tail color. And while we're doing this, like we're doing this when it's all really wet, so we'll get a relatively smooth transition in between all of these layers and these colors. But there's no worries if you get a little bit of a weird stroke there, it's all good. We're gonna be going back over in just a minute and developing out a little bit more of our uh, texture and our ripples and that kind of thing. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the turquoise as soon as you get it down to this lower third portion. And then you're gonna switch over to phthalo blue. That's that dark blue color. 
And then I like to just go ahead and start from the bottom since this is the last color we'll be using in our gradient. Layering in a nice, really big horizontal strokes. I'm sure I'm not getting it on painting back there. And go ahead and like we've been doing with all of the previous colors, taking it all the way up into the color that you last place on your canvas. So you probably noticed that this one is a lot lighter than this one right here. And that's because we're gonna have to layer this bottom portion again one more time. And we'll be doing that with turquoise and phthalo blue mix together once it all dries. But first we actually need to let this dry for about five minutes, maybe in a little bit longer if you have a lot of, uh, a lot of pigment on it. Um, so while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm actually gonna share with you just a couple more things. If, if you wanna learn more acrylics, graphite, or even a little bit of watercolor, um, I'm an instructor with Canvas of the Wild and Canvas of the Wild was founded by myself and my boyfriend, Blake, about two years ago. Yeah. And we've been working with local nonprofits, parks, and preserves to raise funds for local conservation through interactive and engaging art classes. So since all of the things that have been going on with the pandemic has happened, we've gone online and we have classes available right now on YouTube under that name, Canvas of the Wild, spelled exactly how you normally spell it. Um, so please feel free to check that out and ask us any questions you might have about that. And of course, we have an Instagram and a Facebook as well. So feel free to check those out and see what we've been uh, getting up to there. I'm also at the artist residence at the Florida Aquarium. And I've been the artist residence for the last two years, about same about same time since Canvas of the Wild. And with them, I've developed it, both murals, I've done artwork inspired by their conservation efforts. And uh, my boyfriend and I have also gone on expeditions with them down to the Florida Keys to not only experience the research being done to save corals in our Florida coral reef tract, uh, but also to tell the story of it to our community through the power of art. And you can check out more of that stuff at Kelly of the Wild on Instagram and Facebook. That's my normal handle um, for my personal artwork. That's mostly like all wildlife based, landscape based and heavily Florida inspired. All right. So now that we have let our painting dry just like a little bit more, I'd probably say you would even, re I would even recommend laying it rest maybe a few more minutes. Mine's still pretty wet, but I can actually kind of talk you through what we'll be doing next in case you are ready to move on and yours is already dry. So with this right here, we're actually gonna go in and mix our phthalo blue and our turquoise together and get a darker shade that we're going to be doing vertical kind of like bursting strokes, like basically like an early, um, light ray, except it's dark. So it's a dark ray instead of a light ray. Um, so we're going to do that from the bottom going upwards and taking it up about halfway, starting from either corner, being pretty center and center, and then again from the diagonal coming up that way. And that actually, as I found, really creates a lot more depth and that feeling of filtering whenever, at least with acrylics, um, doing this kind of technique. And then as soon as we're done doing that, we're going to go in and do these really dark kind of shadowy, shadowy ripples up top. And then as we get down about all, as it starts to fade into the turquoise that we put, that we're about to put in, we're gonna go in with some teal, add some of that teal layers behind that. And then immediately without even waiting for it to dry, we're gonna start placing in some teal light bursts and then work our way up to our brightest brights. So that's another reason why I really love acrylic is it allows for you to layer in everything pretty dark and then build to your lights. So it's kind of just like the opposite of watercolor basically. All right, so I'm gonna actually go oh, ahead. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what kind of murals you've done at the Florida Aquarium and where your work can be seen? Well, yeah, I, uh, so I've actually done, it's a really big ceiling mural. I did it all digitally actually. And, and um, they got printed out on a 13 foot by 13 foot giant canvas and was hung and backlit. So it looks like you're underwater when you go under it. Um, so it's like a porthole. I don't have a picture of it or I would show you, um, but it's basically you're underneath the coral, um, like, you're, like you're hidden under the coral and you're looking up and there's like sharks going overhead and that kind of thing. So you can see a lot of my work in the Florida Aquarium in their gift shop. Um, I also have some of their artwork in the CEO's office as well as in their um, education center. And then I also have artwork. Most of my artwork is online, I, on my social media, Kelly of the Wild. Um, and then I'm working actually currently with the Florida Wildlife Corridor and the Path of the Panther. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're amazing, love them. Um, they basically are working with not only local ranchers, but also um, local nonprofits and, and conservation. 
to help protect even more land so that there's a corridor that wildlife can travel through from down south all the way up to North Florida. Um, their champion animal is the Florida panther, so I'm actually doing some work with them right now to support that. Um, so maybe that in about a year there'll be a collection in Tallahassee that's talking about that. Um, let's see, where else? I mean, I have like, like I said, a lot of my stuff is online. Um, now with the pandemic going on, I don't have too much artwork out and about, but I was also working with Biscayne National Park, or we still are, um, but as collaborators more so. So basically I got to go down and experience the Biscayne National Park by going out on their boat, going paddle boarding. Uh, we got to photograph a bunch of really cool stuff. We actually saw an endangered butterfly, which was so cool. Um, it's called a Shouse butterfly. If you've never heard of it, you should look at it. It's really cool. And um, we actually saw one when we were on the island and got a photograph of it, which really made my day. <laughs> I am an animal nerd. So that kind of stuff just like gets me so excited. Um, and so from that, I made an entire collection of 11 pieces that was shown in Biscayne National Park for three months. And I actually just got them back, like literally the week before everything, our lives changed. Um, so I actually have them with me right now. And uh, yeah, and so now I'm looking at working on a, a Audubon inspired collection. So now I'm doing from moving from acrylic, working in watercolor, at least for one collection. And then I'm going to start working on some black and white um, African animals as well here in the next few months as well as some sharks because I'm super shark crazy, love scuba diving, um, love hiking, so any of those cool animals I'm all about. <laughs> but I think our painting is now dry or pretty close to dry so you can go ahead and start layering in that darker color. Thank you for that question. I appreciate it, Kathy. All right, so our color is going to be phthalo blue mixed with your turquoise like so make sure you have your okay, you can see it and you're going to start from the bottom and basically just start feathering your way upwards and it looks pretty rough with the first few strokes that's okay you're gonna add a little tiny bit of water to it and much more lightly feather in and feather out that dark color And even if you have a little bit of lighter color that's still wet, it actually can look really, really cool. So don't worry about it too much. Just go ahead and layer in that color. And then I would even, if you, if you want to make it even darker, I'd recommend doing another layer of it. Um, but don't add any water just so it just is very heavy and very thick on the canvas. I actually have to add a little bit more turquoise. So just one moment. And raw it. And in case you were interested, this is the paint that I'm using. Is that phthalo turquoise? It is, yes, phthalo turquoise. Good question. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna mix up just a little bit more. You can also use Prussian blue. Uh, Prussian blue is another really awesome color that I use a lot with my marine paintings. Um, I use it heavily in coral, so I use it as like my base formation for creating coral reefs. Um, but it also can look really good if you're doing like a pelagic inspired piece, or if, like how we're doing right now, if you want to do these really heavy darks at the very bottom, it's also a really good color to use. A rot. I'm at a different angle, so I have to back up. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> All right, we're doing good. <laughs> All right, so once you have that in, we're actually gonna put that big brush away. We will not use it again, so just make sure you put it in your water cup so it doesn't dry out. And you're gonna switch over to that medium-sized flat brush that I was talking about earlier, like this guy right here. And we're actually going to be using our turquoise. Let's go ahead and get your brush nice and wet. Load it up with some color. And we're going to be doing, I'm going to go ahead and show you here, we're going to be doing these dark portions first, layering in just really kind of basically just squiggles. There's like not really too much thought in how you do this other than just make it circular in the way that you're adding, you're layering it in. Um, and then as we get down further, you just let it kind of feather out into the dark color and we'll go back in with the teal. All right, put that right here. 
And so I kind of, it's almost like you're scritchy scratching, like kind of sketching. And I'm using the, what I call skinny side. I, if there is a better term, just let me know. Um, so there's broad side, obviously, for a flat brush, and then there's skinny side. So it's when you're getting that nice little line. I love to use flat brushes. I feel like they're super versatile. Um, and I use them both for as detailed brushes and for more broad strokes. So right. And of course, though, if you're more comfortable with using that round brush, uh, then feel free to do that as well. It's all about what makes you happy and what you feel most comfortable with doing. I'm just here to show you some of the techniques and a few of the approaches you can take to create this piece. But there's, as always, as many ways to create uh, these pieces. Let me see, going all the way down. Just make sure you're keeping that curved effect. So, I brought it. And then while we're doing this particular part, you can actually go ahead and I recommend darkening up those edges still just even a little bit more. And that will add a little bit more emphasis to your center highlights when we get there. All right, so just like that, once you get down about halfway, or at least as, as long as you're getting into your darker areas, you're meeting your darks to your darks, then you can go ahead and wipe off that color from your brush, clean it off really, really good. And then we're gonna go over with some teal. And again, we're just using pure teal here. You might wanna add just a tiny bit of water so it's a bit more fluid. And now you're just gonna go either over some of your darker lines, or you're gonna go in between in some of the white, white areas. Just like this. And I like to especially concentrate the teal color in particular in the center. <laughs> And then be sure to bring some of that teal up higher as well. More like little dashes of it, because you want to make it balanced and cohesive by adding these colors a little bit of everywhere, um, or at least in this, in this instance where the texture, since all the colors are already in this piece. But lots and lots of layers is really key to getting this particular piece down to where you want it. Once you have this initial bit of the teal and that turquoise in there, we're actually gonna go ahead and go in and do our teal highlight, or not highlights, excuse me, light rays. And we're gonna be using that same brush, that same medium brush. And we're gonna be using not just teal, or actually we're gonna use just teal first, excuse me. We're gonna use just teal first, and then we slowly add in more of our white as we go higher. But you're gonna make a really, really watery teal. So like so watery that you're having it drip off your, gamut, off your palette. And then what I would recommend doing before just going at it on your canvas is maybe, I mean, I always have these gloves because I like to test colors and how viscous they are or not on my glove. Maybe you have a piece of paper on the side that you want to test it with because if you have it too watery, they're going to get drips and we all know what it's like to deal with that. So just make sure you don't overload your brush with too much water, but also if you have less, then it will become really kind of cakey when you're trying to do it and you won't get the effect. So I'm going to go ahead brush it down just a little bit more and I'm gonna start at the very bottom and then just start the burst and even if we have a little bit of our dark color still wet down below that actually can look really really cool and it'll start to naturally get a shift in color which I think actually adds to the effect and we got some more water
All right, and be sure to go all the way up your sides, all the way up there. And if you notice, I like to start at a teal spot. So where I've layered in those little areas of teal that we just put in, that's where I start and then I pull downwards. And then a lot of times that's still a little bit wet and it actually helps to blend it even more. And even if you have a little bit of your darker color that's still wet underneath, that's a-okay. It's actually going to look really, really cool when you're all done. All right, so just like that, you've had the teal layering in. So now you're gonna go ahead and dry off that brush really, really good. And you can go ahead and start switching over to the white portion. So I just grab a little bit of pure white and a little bit of that teal in the middle, mix them in the middle and get about a mid-tone right there. And again, you wanna just be wary of the same thing, just make sure you don't have too much water, but also make sure you don't have too little or else you'll start to get um, too cakey. And when you start adding in the white, you're gonna to have to be pretty quick and pretty precise where you want it, because of course, the more and more that you start to mix it and keep brushing over it, the more it's going to blend with your other color that you just layered in, which is great for this layer. It's actually gonna add a really neat effect. But as we get up to our brightest brights, we definitely wanna keep it very, very white. Maybe we're gonna pull it just a little bit further down. All right, so I'm gonna stop about right there. You still have this very bright area up here. So we're actually gonna put away this brush for a little bit and then use that round brush. So that little, there we go, little pointed round brush that we have in our arsenal. And we're going to actually, I just put teal on it, but we're actually gonna be using white. And we're gonna go ahead and place in our brightest brights up top. If yours is still super bright and white, then you're all good to go. But we're also gonna take some of that white down and layer it going downwards into these small portions that are still kind of peeking through. And what I mean by that is you can still see, you can, in this one right here, you see these nice little striations that are right behind our highlights. Um, so that's what we're putting in right now. And then from those little striations, we're gonna pull our final big bright highlights in. And I like to place a few of these really bright white portions in between some of the existing little bits of light filtering through. Don't wanna go over them all completely, but definitely adding in just like a little speck here or there gives it a bit more depth. All right. Okay, I'm feeling pretty happy with this now. All right, and then as soon as you do that, we're actually not gonna have to use this little brush anymore, unless you want to actually, we get, if you wanna add in these little tiny dots, you might not be able to see it. We'll do that at the very, very end. But there's little teeny tiny speckles in the lights, and that's just like if the light is catching like a little bit of plankton or a little bit of something, something in the ocean floating around, that's all that is. So now we're gonna switch back over to our medium flat brush, that uh, size four or size six, you know, it's whichever you have, as long as it's just a lot smaller than that big one we started with. And you're gonna go pure white. Go ahead and get the paint on your brush, add a little bit of water, just like that, and a little bit more water. There we go. Excellent, okay, that's good. And now you're gonna start from those portions that we just added in with our white. 
and very quickly pull those light beams downwards. And then I like to even layer over top of them a little bit. And if you get a little bit of a darker color coming upwards, that's totally cool. All you have to do is just go over it with a little bit of that white and you're all set to go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting in your face, guys. I'm just trying to back away to make sure I can see I'm layering this incorrectly. Wanted to add just a little bit more of a highlight. And then I wouldn't go too much further down with your whites there uh, because the further down you go, the less realistic it actually becomes since the light can't reach that far down into the depths. So just keep that in mind whenever you're doing this that you want to concentrate that at least the bright white portion really up top. Mm -hmm. All right, and so just like that, you have in your bright white ones. And so now I would say if you want to add in, if you maybe got a little too far down into your darks, you can actually go back and fix that pretty quickly um, as long as you catch it before it gets dry. So you can go in really fast, a little bit of, let's say that's a dark, dark teal color. I'm sorry, dark turquoise and that dark blue color. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that, a little bit of water. And I'm going to feather upwards again. And so that way you can push and pull your tones still a little bit. After you layer in some color, if you get a little too bright, you can push that brightness away. If you get a little too dark, you can pull that dark back down. So it's a very useful and really kind of a fun technique. But definitely take your time playing with this and try it a few times. And then as soon as you get done like mastering this part of the skill, you can go in and easily add in like a little humpback whale or anything like that. So there's only one more little tiny step if you would like to do, you don't have to, it's totally up to you. And that's just if you wanna add in those tiny little dots. Um, and basically I like to start how we did, how we started with our light rays when we went to teal to white. So you just grab a little bit of that teal color on your small round brush and then concentrate little tiny dabs, little tiny little bloop, 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 bloops in the darker portions of your light rays. And you're gonna, you can take them all the way down, like have a couple down really, really low if you'd like, but really keep them concentrated in this like mid zone, especially with the teal. And of course, kind of keep them concentrated in the light beams versus outside the light beams. I mean, of course, some of them you want to have out, but having them in the light beams make, just makes it communicate what we're talking about with having them like highlight a little creature or a little bit of plankton or something floating in the water column. All right, and then after that, you can just go right back in with some of this pure white color and then concentrate the pure white up higher in the beams, like closer to the surface. And again, definitely in that light ray column. And then maybe a couple just slightly outside the light rays. And again, this is completely optional guys. It's just if you would like, it's kind of fun or sort of feels like you're like looking at stars too. Um, this is the, also what I do whenever I'm doing like galaxies, night skies, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
and I want like maybe one or two really, really bright ones further down. And just like that, you have done your own light rays and gradient. Um, and this is basically, this is the way that I develop all of my marine paintings and they have this kind of structure going on in it. So I hope that you enjoyed learning how to do this. And if you have any questions about it, please feel free to reach out to me at Oh, there we go. Are we unmuted? I've unmuted everybody, hopefully, to. Oh, so okay, now. There, there we go. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to unmute everybody so they could ask Kelly questions, and I ended up muting everybody. Um, so I've, uh, I'm unmuted, so everybody can, anybody who has questions can ask now. Sweet. Anybody have any questions? So that was fascinating and quick. I Very know. Quick. <laughs> Is it too quick? <laughs> no, I think it's really quick because it, it oh, shows awesome. how you can awesome do an awesome background mm -hmm. and no time. Yeah. Uh, would you please like put the the art close to the camera so we can see the details that you made? Yeah. Does that help? Oh yeah. Yes. Also, I like back it away. I noticed that like I don't the the lights changing from my. My we we can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Very Sorry, nice. guys. I thought it. I thought. I thought you could see these. Looks nice. <laughs> Very nice. I feel like I'm underwater. Good. All right. But I hope you're holding your breath. <laughs> uh, yeah. I tried. I went about a minute, and I had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, if y'all have any questions about this technique, I also am making a little bit longer video that goes into also like painting an animal over top of this. It's going to be on YouTube sort of soon, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, but like I said, the, you can reach out to me with any questions about any of my artwork or any of these classes or lessons at Kelly of the Wild or on Canvas of the Wild. Um, specifically on the Canvas of the Wild YouTube channel, that's where we have a lot more classes like this. If you're interested in learning kind of techniques and uh, creating grounds or having specific things, like feel free to let me know what you want to learn because that just helps me understand what you what to create for you guys. Were there any questions in particular about this artwork or something else like similar like it that you would have a question about marine paintings or in this kind of category that I can maybe answer? Uh, one question I have is, um, did you mention that you had done some stuff at the uh, aquarium? Yes. So you've done a lot of their mural like that, underwater mural stuff at the aquarium? I've done this in their entire gift shop. So this is in their gift shop, mostly the one that's front facing. Oh. And then I've done um, 11 foot, a big 11 foot panoramic painting that's in the back. Wow, Ooh. very nice. That's, that's good. It's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've worked with them for like, I say the last, I've been with them for like three years, but I've been the artist residence for the last two years. Um, because I've been working with them to develop that and the idea is and soon, hopefully when everything's kind of get back more normal, we can have more artists coming through and it being a consistent program is kind of the idea. Um, so in, but in the meantime, I've just been pursuing some of like my personal passions, which is love conservation and nature. I grew up in central Florida and, um, I spent my whole life outside kayaking, hiking, no other kids my age and my siblings are all way older than me. So <laughs> nature was my thing. <laughs> was what I did. So that's definitely been a huge inspiration for me in particular. And um, being able to save it and share that with the next generation and all the generations after that's really important to me and my work. So I've aligned yeah. myself with uh, more organizations like that. Oh, it's nice. Do you do a lot of plain air stuff in your travels? Oh, say that again? Kind of cut out. Do you do a lot of plain air work in your travels? I have. So um, my boyfriend and I actually went to Thailand three years ago, <laughs> everything's three years ago. <laughs> and um, so when we were there, I did a lot of watercolor collection because that was the best, easiest thing to travel with. Um, but I'm getting back into watercolors right now. And we're going to be doing some exploring around Florida. I'm um, going with the Florida Wildlife Corridor. I'm gonna go do some stuff in Kissimmee and then maybe exploring a couple places more in the Keys. So I'm definitely getting into kind of a watercolor phase I'm looking like for this year. And then I'm still gonna be doing acrylics um, but I also do a lot of sketching and graphites and digital work. So I do scientific illustrations as well for the University of Miami um, and the Florida Aquarium, Shark Allies, and working on some stuff for the Florida Wildlife Corridor there too. Wow. Nice. Wow, busy. Busy, busy. <laughs> That's the only way to be. 
thank you all for hanging out while I was painting really fast. <laughs> thank you for doing this, Kelly. This was fascinating. No, of course. It's my pleasure. It's just so exciting. I mean, I, I love being in my studio and I love sharing what I know with anybody who's interested. So if anybody's ever wants to know anything in particular, just let me know. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks everybody so much.